welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to take a look at Affinity Photo, which began life on the Mac in 2015 but has just been made available for Windows. Now the package costs about $50 or £50 and I don't normally look at paid software on this channel. However, because Affinity Photo is presented as a real Photoshop alternative, it may well be of interest to many people, including myself, who object to Adobe's rental pricing model. I want to say from the start that I have nothing to do with Serif, the company who make Affinity Photo. I've not been paid to make this video. I never am paid to make a video. I'm simply talking about Affinity Photo here because I think it's a really important new software package. So, here we are in Affinity Photo. Here I'm running a trial, so if you want to play with this thing, you can download a trial as well. 10-day trial, you can play with all the features. I'll go to a file and new, do a new document, and here you can set the size of the document in pixels as you would expect, or you can pick from presets, and there's also lots of fantastic units you can use. You can do your document in yards if you really want to, which is unusual in a photo editor. But the key thing here, the one of the things that immediately sets this out as a professional package, is you can choose your colour format. You could be looking at a 1 byte or 2 bytes per channel RGB, RGB 8 or 16, or indeed even high dynamic range 32 bits per channel RGB, or you can do grayscale, but critically you can do CMYK. So you can do print work here because you can do a cyan magenta yellow black piece of artwork. But to here, I'll stick to RGB and I'll have a transparent background, which is handy if you can do things, say, for video use. So I'll do OK on that, and you'll see suddenly everything comes to life. And you'll see this looks very much like Photoshop. If I just flick through to show you the version of Photoshop I normally use, you can see very similar, very familiar interface. If we flip back here to Affinity Photo, you'll see just as in Photoshop, we've got by default the tools down the left here, and across on the right, we've got what in Photoshop you would call the panels, things like the navigator, color, brushes, etc. Here, they're called the Studio, but they're obviously doing exactly the same thing. Menus, I'll just flick through very briefly. You can see as I flip the mouse across, it's the sort of stuff you would expect in a decent photo editing package. We go across to view, I go to studio here. You can see these are all what I would still call panels or part of a studio you could be using. All highly configurable. The interface you're looking at here is pretty much the standard in Affinity Photo, but I've played around with it a bit for the things I particularly want to use. So I've got levels and adjustment and things. I've effects transform. I put them all down here. Let's just do a little bit of artwork. You'll see by default there isn't a layer in our document, which is slightly unusual, but it's because this package can do both pixel-based artwork and vector-based artwork, and it doesn't therefore give you a layer until you know what you're going to do with it. So I'll pick up the, uh, the brush there, and as soon as I uh, scribble with the brush, you'll see it actually gives me a pixel-based layer, and the assistant tells me it's done that. You can, of course, do an obvious assistant if you want to. I could also have added my own pixel-based layer by going down here, add layer. I won't do that because I don't need it. But we'll just scribble with our little brush. Let's pick up, say, a different colour, maybe a nice darker reddish thing. Um, brushes are all over here. I've got my presets over here. There we are. Pick something maybe a bit softer, maybe like, say, that. Maybe even bigger. Let's be really, really, really wild. Do a big brush and we'll... Oh, that was a little bit too big, wasn't it? Didn't mean a brush quite as big as that. That's a bit daft. Uh, let's add another colour as well. This is going to be the world's best ever document, isn't it? Marvellous piece of artwork being, in the, being made here. Let's make it slightly bigger. I just want something to play with, and that, that'll do. There we are, we've done a lovely, lovely bit of artwork there. I'll also do some vector-based stuff here, so I'll go to the, uh, the pen tool down here and sort of click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, and finish it off. What a lovely path I've made there. And I could now pick up that and make it a bit thicker so we can actually see what I've done, and I'll maybe turn it um, black so we can uh, better contrast with that piece of artwork. And there we are, we've now got a nice vector-based object sitting on top of our uh, pixel layer. We've got here various effects you can apply, just like Photoshop. I could, for example, add a Gaussian blur to that, and uh, even though it's vector-based art, it'll see allow me to blur it. Or I could add something like, let's get rid of that, um, I don't know, something like, say, a bevel emboss. Now, you could do this down here, but the great thing is you can click on this little button here and bring up a proper layer effects panel. 
This is a bit like the blending options panel in Photoshop. So here I could uh, change my bevel emboss, use say a standard outer one, often use those and lettering, pull that like that. We could add, I don't know, a, a gradient overlay to this as well. And again, move it around, change the angle, all the normal things you'd have in Photoshop to do it. So as you can see, all the standard photo editing stuff you'd expect to have in Photoshop or a Photoshop clone, you've got here sitting available for you in Affinity Photo. So, I just thought I'd prove to you that all the traditional photo adjustment stuff is here you'd expect to find. So I pulled in a couple of pictures I shot, uh, I don't know, quite a while ago, about five years ago, I think, according to the, the files. But uh, here's a nice little B. We can use our navigator as you would in Photoshop to move around and uh, pick out sections to look at. Aren't insects amazing things? There's a B, and we've got over somewhere else, a bit too close really, isn't it? Go that, that's about there. And uh, we've also got what is, what's called swampy area. I give my pictures strange names, maybe it was a swampy area. I don't know. So uh, what if we wanted to alter those images? Well, we could go down here to adjustment and you'd see a lot of the things you'd expect to find under adjustments as you would find in Photoshop are here. So things like levels are here, are often a good place to start to uh, manipulate an image is just to uh, play with the ends of the levels curves, get a bit more vibrance there, but I'll, I'll get rid of that. I think don't want that. Uh, maybe I'll try playing with say curves. I often play with curves and I bring up curves there and you can do the sort of same sort of gamma effect with curves. I, I like doing, or maybe a little bit too much, but for the purpose of this video, I think we'll leave that like that. And uh, once you've done that, as in Photoshop, your adjustment will have been added as an adjustment layer, so you can turn that on and off in your image. It's not um, destructive. You can see it is a bit too much there, never mind. But you can also the opacity of it there by uh, taking it up and down after you've applied the effect. And you can even take your effect and uh, copy it, and then we could go across to another document and we could uh, paste it in, and that would apply that to that as well. So you've got all the things you would expect to be able to adjust images and to take effects and move them between images, all that type of thing. All the standard stuff you find in Photoshop for basically doing Photoshop type stuff, you do find in Affinity Photo. Right, for many people, myself included, a really key feature of Affinity Photo is you can work with your existing PSD, existing Photoshop files. So I can go here, for example, and open up, say, this. This is a book cover, no preview of a Photoshop file. Don't really care about previews. We can open up the file, that's the main thing. And it comes in, and here you can see this is a book jacket for my next big thing book. And we can do the old zoomy in thing. I love to zoom in on print resolution files. Look at the texture on the moon, very exciting. And uh, we can see this has come in as a fully editable file. We can see all the layers here. We can turn the moon off if we want to. There we are, no moon, moon's back again. Very exciting. But we've got all the text here and it's all editable. I could go to this text layer, which is the, the title. Let's go in a little bit closer, move around to there, go into my text tool and uh, this is editable text. I can alter it and it'll, it'll work. We can put extra characters in like that and it works absolutely fine. And we can go to the um, effects menu and you can see here we've got a, an outer glow applied to that text and it works fine. This is really important. We can actually bring in, edit, work on, save back Photoshop PSD files. And for anyone who's got a very large archive of material, which they've built up in Photoshop over time, or just needs to work with PSD files, load into other packages, then this is a critical feature. You can't do this in GIMP, you can't do this in other free Photoshop alternatives, but you can do it in Affinity Photo. Right, the next thing I want to show you is what's called personas in Affinity Photo. And this I think is, is slightly weird. Affinity Photo has the feel and the function of a really quality high-end package. And then it throws in this thing called Personas, which takes us back to a more sort of amateurish package. You know, it's just a strange sort of juxtaposition. Anyway, what are they? Well, the persona we have here, the first one, the photo persona, is basically all the functionality I've shown you so far. It's the standard interface. Then we get the next persona, which is the liquify persona. This is basically a liquify effect. You might see here a small grid on the screen. We can manipulate that grid, pull it in different directions, liquify the image. 
Got no problems with that as an effect, all sorts of control here, great things you can do with it if you want to do that type of thing. Why is it a separate persona? Why does it need its own interface? It doesn't. This should just be an effect you can call up and use from the rest of the package. We then have the develop persona. This again is very useful, extremely useful. You can use it to work on raw images you bring in, say, from a camera, and you can do all sorts of things here. You can work on, say, lens distortion. You can do dramatic changes, but you'd normally be doing quite subtle changes here. You can correct for issues with a chromatic aberration or defringe things to take away those horrible purple edges you get at the end of images taken on a long zoom lens, that type of thing. So that's, again, very useful, but this really is an import filter. This should be a function you access from the rest of the, the package menus, in my view. You've then got here the, I think it's called tone mapping. This is allowing you to alter tone in the image, the contrast in the image, lots of things you can play with. Lots of great presets here. Look, detail looks really, really cool. But again, this should just be functionality elsewhere in the package. And finally, on the end of here, we have the, uh, at least for the moment, the export persona. One of the things that worries me about these is how many are going to grow as the package develops over time. And the export persona gives you options you can use in saving files. Now, that's okay, but to be honest, there really should be all the file saving options you want in the standard file requesters. And this gets us to a bigger issue I have with Affinity Photo. Now here I've loaded in a JPEG image, and I can go to File and therefore Save As, and you'd think it'll save it as a JPEG image, but it won't. It will save it by default as an Affinity Photo file. And you're probably thinking, Chris, stop being so really unhappy about this. Just select from the drop down to save that as a R. You can't. The only file format you can save in from Save or Save As is Affinity Photo. That is utterly ridiculous. GIMP does a similar thing. You know, no one in the world is going to keep an archive of Affinity Photo files unless they're really rather strange because they're not going to be compatible with the rest of the world. And the reason for getting a package like this is compatibility. It's a Photoshop clone. That's the reason for having it. So you have to here, if you want to save your file, go to export. Even this is slightly strange. For a start, you don't have a drop down for the different formats. You have little icons at the top of the screen. Again, it takes you back towards a far more amateurish package. What happens when we have more of these? This is not a massive list of things you can export as. It's probably a fifth of that available in Photoshop itself. Why isn't this just a standard drop-down? That would seem far more sensible. But more fundamentally, my issue, is, as I've made clear already, is this should be in the Save As menu. You should be able to save as, pick a file format, save as that format. I really hope they sort this in future versions of Affinity Photo. There's no doubt that already Affinity Photo is a reasonable Photoshop alternative. It offers a full CYMK workflow, it can open and edit PSD files. These are very good, very useful things for people like myself who depend on Photoshop and putting Photoshop files into other packages, things like Adobe After Effects. Now, there's no doubt there are some quirks in Affinity Photo. I really don't like the Personas feature. The way it saves files is pretty strange, and some of the screen rendering is a little bit strange here and there. It settles down, but it isn't perfect yet. But uh, the fact that Affinity Photo costs less than Photoshop Elements, and the same as what about five months of Photoshop rental, means it is a good value package in the context of, of Photoshop itself, and I hope it will develop further. And, when I first used it, I had that feeling of, ah, finally, this is what I might be using when I cease using Photoshop when, when at some point I can't continue to use my current version of Photoshop and I don't want to move to Adobe's Creative Cloud subscription model. Anyway, that's the end of this video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.